ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ವಿ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟು ಟೆನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಟೆನ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಂಟೈಟಲ್ಡ್ ಎಸ್ ದ ಡೆಲಿವರೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಯಮಲ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಟ್ರೀ ಐಲ್ ರೀಡ್ ದ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ರಿಪೀಟ್ ದ ಸೆವೆಂತ್ ಒನ್ ತಮ್ ದೃಷ್ಟ ವಿಡಿತ ದೇವ್ಯೋ ವಿವಶ್ರುತ ಶಾಪಶಂಕಿತ ವಾಸಾಂಸಿ ಪರ್ಯಧೂ ಶೀಘ್ರಂ ವಿವಸ್ತ್ರೌ ನೈವ ಗುಹ್ಯಕೌ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ Upon seeing Narada, the naked young girls of the demigods were very much ashamed. Afraid of big curs, they covered their bodies with their garments. But the two sons of Kuvera did not do so. Instead, not caring about Narada, they remained naked. Text 7. Tau Dhrishtva Madhiramattau Sri Madandho ಸುರಾತ್ಮಜೋ ತಯೋ ಅನುಗ್ರಹಾರ್ಥ ಶಾಪ ದಾಸ್ಯನ್ ಇದಂ ಜಗೌ ತೌ ದೃಷ್ಟ ಮದಿರ ಮತ್ತೋ ಶ್ರೀಮಾಧ ಮದಾಂಧೌ ಸುರಾತ್ಮಜೋ ತಯೋರ್ ಅನುಗ್ರಹಾರ್ಥ ಶಾಪ ದಾಸ್ಯನ್ ಇದಂ ಜಗೋ ತೌ ದೃಷ್ಟ ಮದಿರ ಮತ್ತೋ ಶ್ರೀಮದಾಂಧೋ ಸುರಾತ್ಮಜೋ ತಯೋರ್ ಅನುಗ್ರಹಾರ್ಥ ಶಾಪ ದಾಸ್ಯನ್ ಇದಂ ಜಗೋ ತೌ ದೃಷ್ಟ ಮದಿರ ಮತ್ತೋ ಶ್ರೀಮದಾಂಧೌ ಸುರಾತ್ಮಜೋ ತಯೋರ್ ಅನುಗ್ರಹಾರ್ಥ ಶಾಪ ದಾಸ್ಯನ್ ಇದಂ ಜಗೋ ಮದಿರ ತಯೋರನುಗ್ರಹಾರ್ಥ ಶಾಪಂ ದಾಸ್ಯನ್ ಇದಂ ಜಗೋ ತೌ ದೃಷ್ಟ ಮದಿರ ಮತ್ತ ಈ ಮಧಾಂಧ ಸುರಾತ್ಮಜ ತಯೋರನುಗ್ರಹಾರ್ಥ ಶಾಪ ದಾಸ್ಯನ್ ಇದಂ ಜಗ ತೃಷ್ಟ ಮದಿರ ಮತ್ತ ಶ್ರೀಮಧಾಂಧ ಸುರಾತ್ಮಜ ತಯೋರನುಗ್ರಹಾರ್ಥ ಶಾಪ ದಾಸ್ಯನ್ ಇದಂ ಜಗೌ ಮಾತಜೀಸ್ ತೃಷ್ಟ ಮದಿರ ಮತ್ತ ಶ್ರೀಮಧಾಂಧ ಸುರಾತ್ಮಜ ತಯೋರನುಗ್ರಹಾರ್ಥ ಶಾಪ ದಾಸ್ಯಂ ಇದಂ ಜಗ ದೃಷ್ಟ ಮದಿರ ಮತ್ತ ಶ್ರೀಮಧಾಂಧ ಸುರಾತ್ಮಜ ತಯೋರನುಗ್ರಹಾರ್ಥ ಶಾಪ ದಾಸ್ಯನ್ ಇದಂ tau the two boys of the demi god drishtva seeing madira matto 
very intoxicated because of drinking liquor shri mada andho being blind with false prestige and opulence sura atmajo the two sons of the demigods tayoh unto them anugraha artaya for the purpose of giving special mercy shapam akars dasyan desiring to offer them idam this jagau uttered translation and purport by his divine grace ac bhakti vedant swami shila prabhupa seeing the two sons of the demigods naked and intoxicated by opulence and false prestige devarshi narada in order to show them special mercy desired to give them a special curse thus he spoke as follows purport although in the beginning narad muni appeared very angry and cursed them at the end the two demigods nalakuvara and manigriva were able to see the supreme personality of god and krishna face to face as the curse was ultimately auspicious and brilliant one has to judge what kind of curse narada placed upon them shila vishwanath chakravarti thakur gives here in a good example when a father finds his child deeply asleep but the child has to take some medicine to cure some disease the father pinches the child so that the child will get up and take the medicine in a similar way narad muni cursed nalakuvar and manigriva in order to cure their disease of material blindness om ajnanati mirandasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmay shri gurave namaha shri chaitanya manobhishtam sthapitam yena bhutale swayam rupakadamayam dadati svapadanti वंदे हम श्री गुरु श्री जुता पद कमल श्री गुरुन् वैष्णवांश श्री रूप सागर जात सह गण रघुनाथ तम सजीव साइत सवदूत परिजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पादान सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखा नमो ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सरस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चात्यदेशिणे वाछाकूश कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवभ्यो नमो नम हे कृष्णकुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय जाय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवासदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम upon seeing narada the naked young girls of the demigods were very much ashamed afraid of being cursed they covered their bodies with their garments but the two sons of kuvera did not do so instead not caring about narada they remained naked seeing the two sons of the demigods naked and intoxicated by opulence and false prestige they were shri narada in order to show them special mercy desired to give them a special curse thus he spoke as follows hari krishna so this beautiful pastime of damodar leela takes a very strange twist the first part of the story is how krishna is enjoying with his mother very fun filled pastime but suddenly once krishna is bound and as he is moving the whole story becomes very grave and serious very interesting therefore in the vedic literature in the shrimad bhagavatam also 10th canto yes there are beautiful pastimes of krishna 
but all these pastimes have certain lesson to be taught also because without lesson as proper the repeatedly explains you know people hear you know bhagavat sapta and they enjoy they cry tears but there is no transformation the entire process of knowledge is not simply to be entertained neither for information but most importantly it's for transformation there's a very interesting twist between damodar lila and nalkover bring uh, delivered by narad muni and very serious story also how a sense gratification can lead to such a disastrous result it's not a very good bargain you know little enjoyment leads to 100 years of becoming a tree hmm? who will who, materialistically also not a good bargain therefore overall if we see material life even if you consider okay material life is good you know spiritual life is tough so why not enjoy why why follow all the rules why follow all the regulations you know let us live a very free life but material life doesn't even allow that there is not even complete enjoyment any time enjoyment it can enjoyment can be terminated very dangerously at least for nalakwer and manigriv narad muni was there he not only cursed them he said he will remember and because of that curse just becoming tree is very dangerous and that's what happens in the kali yuga there should be millions of trees in mumbai no so just becoming tree without narad muni's interference krishna is not going to come there you know the trees will be uprooted made papers and maybe some sports magazine is printed some film magazine is printed another naked picture of another woman or a man right so there is no benefit of being simply being a curse so therefore a sense gratification in kali yuga in material life without the interference of pure devotee is extremely risky and dangerous otherwise krishna as prabhupada explains krishna had no you know he had no reason to go there he could have gone to some other trees maybe krishna took a d route you know like going round about why because he remembered oh my devotee narad muni had cursed them and what kind of curse becoming a tree with remembrance ignorance is very dangerous but unfortunately sometime we start living a life of ignorance also what can be done you know there is no other solution when 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 we take that stand then we start enjoying ignorance also but someone is in a miserable condition but is reminded that you are in miserable condition constantly for 100 years there is a intense purification so he didn't the deliverance of nalakur and manigriva did not come easily by just standing as trees it is not so easy oh no it's good narad muni cursed them they had to stand as a tree for some time and the deliverance took place bhakti or devotional service the mercy of the lord is not mechanistic it has to have some process there has to be repentance there has to be active uh, engagement in devotional service so what was their active engagement nalakur and manigriva the active engagement was constant remembrance of their their sinful activity and they couldn't do it they couldn't undo it unless 100 years were completed no sometime you want to do something you want to rectify your situation but there is no facility you have to just wait patience no? that causes more trouble so narad muni purified them very severely it was not so easy then after 100 years krishna came and therefore when they offered their prayers you know they offered prayers very deeply you know, the prayers were not superficial this time when they went back to the heavenly planets they did not go okay escape now no, another lake we will find to enjoy you know, they were thinking okay we'll go back and continuously remember your glorious personality in the association of pure devotees 
another point Prabhupada explains, Narad Muni is like a physician. Very interesting character, Narad Muni. You know, he does not do things in a stereotyped way. He is not a physician based upon reading textbooks, studying from some medical college. No. He is so experienced. It's amazing. Narad Muni's character is so brilliant. You know, he deals with different personalities totally differently. Therefore, someone who is working under him as an apprentice will be completely bewildered. Just imagine if you have a doctor, very expert, very experienced doctor, and if you are working under him, and every time he changes his system, he changes his, you know, administrating of the medicine, and you can't question him also. So therefore, what would you duplicate to treat your patient? Not possible for ordinary apprentice. You know, he has to be very expert and understand what the what his master is doing. No, Narad Muni, very brilliant. For some, he gives sense gratification. Chitraketu Maharaj, if you see, there was a lot of lamentation because he had no son. So through his friend, Angira Muni, what Narad Muni did, he provided him the son. Take your son and be happy for some time. And then, he took the son, he was enjoying and because of his son, others became very envious, other queens, and they gave poison to this baby, and the baby died, then Narad Muni came. And after coming to him, Narad Muni preached. One may say, why he did not preach before only? Because Narad Muni knows Chitraketu Maharaj, we don't know Chitraketu, you know, we have our own assumptions and imaginations. What works properly, it takes great experience and expertise. What to give in Krishna consciousness? Sometime, you know, recently I was discussing with one senior brahmachari. He was speaking about one senior is called sannyasi. Sometime he tells his devotees, disciples, minimize your spiritual life. Focus on your relationship. One may say, hey, how can he do like that? He knows his students very well. Because he is dealing with his students from many years. You know, what is good for them at this time, he is giving it and it works. One may say is compromising. Rather than increasing his spiritual life, increasing their spiritual life, why is he asking them, come less to the temple? So Narad Muni, he gave now the dose of strong philosophy, and not only he did, Narad Muni is very powerful, he revived the son. Not revived the son so that the son, father and mother, they go back and live ever after happily. No, this is not Vedic system. No, this is the typical karma kanda. But what he did, he revived the son and through son he gave much higher dose, PowerPoint presentation. So then Chitraketu and his wife, you know, they were enlightened. And again, Narad Muni did not, very interesting, Narad Muni, what he did with Chitraketu Maharaj, he gave him pure devotional service with lots of sense gratification. Just like Kubera also had his Pushpak Viman, similarly Chitraketu Maharaj became a pure devotee and he was given sense gratification also. Can you imagine such combination? Everybody will aspire for this. Limitless sense gratification with the remembrance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is moving about, you know, in his, in his plane, going everywhere, and then also remembering Krishna. As Prabhupada explains, sense gratification and self-realization, they go ill together. But for Chitraketu Maharaj, it was opposite. How long? Some more time. Because sense gratification... Even with remembrance of Krishna, it is not very easy. I remember once we had, uh, after the Sharad Purnima festival, His Holiness Radhanand Maharaj had a meeting in Radharaj Bihari temple. And he wanted to chant on the beach. It was a late, you know, we went there, maybe around 8.30 or 9. We were walking, chanting Hare Krishna. But that was not a good time because in Jew area there are many colleges. 
right so all the the followers of nalaku were and vanigri were coming there <laughs> so after the japa was over mahara said too many ajamil kands here so our realization was you know myself and gaur gopal prabhu were saying that even if you are with your spiritual master if you are in a wrong place you know it does not give you the benefit you have to be with your guru but in the right place so it's not a why should one go to a place where one should struggle to chant hare krishna hmm? right it is not a very good proposal so you know beach is not the right place at 9 o'clock or in the evening time hmm? i want to chant intense rounds no you will not be chanting intense rounds but the intense effect of the materialistic association will affect us what was i saying before story ha huh? yeah chitraketu maharaj you know he had a combined sense gratification and devotional service always remembering krishna but still he made a mistake what was the mistake as he was going in his plane when you have nothing else to do when there is no serious business you start analyzing others huh? you know this is wrong this is right no and if you have a philosophy also and that's what many time we see internet you know where even devotees unfortunately many times you know they have written sites about other devotees they are perverted chitraketu maharajas you know not only talking about devotees writing about devotees so what chitraketu maharaj did he had no business propat gives all the combination of different purports in this regard so lord shiva was giving talk to his followers and very affectionately you know placing his wife on his lap only lord shiva can do it lord shiva had no problem parvati had no problem and even those who were listening to lecture they had no problem no they didn't get bewildered what shiva was doing but maharaj chitraketu as he was moving you know so what happened he started you know kind of it was sarcasm but there was appreciation no doubt but in that appreciation there was sarcasm now if there is appreciation with sarcasm not everybody can understand it takes a lot of intelligence lord shiva could understand lord shiva's followers could understand but parvati could not get it <laughs> so she felt offended she did not see the appreciation she saw only the sarcasm and so she cursed that is the external part of the story but the real part is vishwanath chakravarti thakur says that the lord wanted chitraketu maharaj to come back faster no enough with sense gratification now you come faster as pralad priya prabhu was mentioning prabhupad in the beginning he told devotees eat as much as you want that of all order they followed very sincerely <laughs> and after some time prabhupad said now you eat less i think umapati maharaj has prabhupad you told to eat more now you are telling eat less there is a contradiction in your order he said there is no contradiction when i told you to eat more you are eating more now i am telling you to eat less eat less that's all <laughs> so chitraketu maharaj you know vishwanath chakravarti thakur explains krishna wanted him to come back early therefore he, he through parvati he cursed him what kind of curse now being the vidyadhar the associate of shankarshan suddenly become brahma rakshas material life is like this everything happens very abruptly whatever happens in material life it is very abrupt you know suddenly it is always unexpected just imagine even in vidyadhar lok the changes which takes place is extremely abrupt sometime therefore we get shocked are he was like this how this happened that is what material life means everything is very abrupt suddenly he was turned into brahma rakshas but because chitraketu maharaj had such a great depth of devotional service he came down he offered his obeisances to mother parvati in fact chitraketu was put in a right spot to bring out his right consciousness so even a great devotee of the lord like maharaj chitraketu 
if they are not if they are not in the right situation the right realizations don't come or you don't practice the right realization because you are in the wrong environment for most people even if somebody is sincere good devotee but if the environment is unfriendly then what happens we don't see you know the depth of devotion coming out like recently in our school we had one session with the children glorifying their mothers no which is difficult for teenage children no they make they speak about their mothers and father but in a negative way very very amazing you know all these children they were speaking and i didn't expect i thought okay they'll speak for little bit i love my mother she cooks for me she gives this to me she gives that to me almost everybody was crying glorifying their mother you put them in the right environment then the positivity comes out if there is a wrong environment they could make their mother also you know as if she's a putna you know say what is this you know she is this she is that father he becomes hiranyakashipu right <laughs> so when chitraketu maharaj came down you know sudden change of consciousness because he got it the right environment what did he say he told mother parvati my dear parvati you know actually you are simply an instrument he went beyond the action of mother parvati he was very competent prabhupad explains chitraketu maharaj was competent to counter curse parvati hmm? tit for tat and that's what the normal people would do but he went beyond you know he is not being arrogant he is seeing the hands of god he said actually it's not you you are simply an instrument you know i bow down to the destiny and he didn't beg mother parvati please relieve me from this curse you know it's too bad when i was enjoying in my planet now i have to eat human being hmm? rakshas so please don't do this you know he didn't expect those kind of benediction and he just walked away offering obeisances to her and mother parvati was you know she was looking you know who is this and lord shiva prabhupad explains Lord Shiva told Mother Parvati, "You thought you are very beautiful, but see the beauty of this devotee." And then Lord Shiva chanted that famous verse: "The devotees of Krishna, whether they are in the hellish planet or in the heavenly planets or wherever they are, because they are always Narayana Parayana. It doesn't matter where they are; they are always focused. So just see how Narada Muni had great patience and expertise." and bringing devotees not abruptly to the higher stage but bringing them gradually according to whom he is dealing with but with vasudev narad muni was not at all compromising no he didn't wait for you know let me give narad vasudev okay you know you have written this book no problem let it be circulated for 5000 years then i will come and teach you by your experience how this book is all watered down he came and he immediately said jugup sitam he said so obnoxious can you imagine somebody has spent so many years writing all the books he is expecting i'll get lots of nobel prize and gnanapeet award and this prize that prize but narad muni comes and just chastises vasudev and vasudev takes it in the right spirit because he was ready for it narad muni as i said is not stereotype he is not giving the same method to everybody and when vrakasur came to him now vrakasur comes and asks whom should i worship like imagine you know daud ibrahim comes to us and he says whom should i worship we'll say wow isko to abhi you know japa mala de denge narad muni was not like that narad muni said okay you go and worship lord shiva only how can narad muni a pure devotee of lord exclusive devotee ikantika bhakta asking someone who has come to him whom should i worship the question is open it is not closed question he didn't ask tell me how should i worship vishnu he is asking whom should i worship vishnu so you have the choice to say worship vishnu narad muni said no you go and worship vrakasur 
understanding his level that this person is not fit to worship Lord Vishnu. What does he need? He needs Vishnu's tricky benediction indirectly. And Vrakasur heard from Narad Muni and he went and worshiped Lord Shiva because his desire was different. And then when I worship Shiva and then he got some benediction and he wanted to put his hand on the head of Lord Shiva only so that he can enjoy with Parvati. And that's how Lord Vishnu had to come. And then Vishnu tricked Vrakasur and finished up Vrakasur. And then Dhruva Maharaj when he approached Narad Muni, Narad Muni tried to give him pure devotional service. You know Dhruva Maharaj could have taken it Therefore, Narad Muni gave that choice. But Dhruva Maharaj Adana, he said, I can't handle this. You know, I am not, I understand this is what I am supposed to do. But because of my Rajoguna being born in a Kshatriya family, you know, this, this revenge is so powerful. But revenge not against them by harming them, but getting something higher than what they have. If you have something like that, if you have the process, please tell me. So, Narad Muni, change his plan, kind of compromise, not compromise, but gave what Dhruva Maharaj could take and putting Krishna again, he gave him something he can achieve, you know, material benedictions. And then Dhruva Maharaj went, he chanted the holy names of the Lord and he got Lord Vishnu's darshan. And by receiving Lord Vishnu's darshan, there was some purification. He said, you know, actually I don't want this. I came for asking the broken piece of glass. And you are the real jewel. But Lord Vishnu could see there is still that desire is there. And again, I think Prabhupada explains, or Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, that if Lord Vishnu had not given what Dhruva Maharaj wanted originally, then many people who come to Krishna with lot of material desires and after worshipping they realize we got purified and Vishnu doesn't give. So Vishnu was thinking maybe many will not come to me if I don't give him. So advertisement has to, you know, the marketing has to continue. So people has to come. So he gave him. And Dhruva Maharaj enjoyed for 30,000 years. Can you imagine 30,000 years of sense gratification having a big, big position Yes, Krishna is there. Narad Muni could have thought, Oh my God, you know, I preached to him and still is enjoying. Why is not taken sannyas? Uh, why is he not preaching pure devotional service? You know, something wrong in my preaching strategy. I have to wait for 30,000 years. Let me curse him. Let your sense gratification go to hell. Let you become miserable. Hmm? Sometime immature devotee may curse other devotees who are having opulent lifestyle also. You know, your material life get destroyed. You become instantly pure devotee. Narad Muni did not do like that. Very amazing character. You know, changing his plan. Why? Because there is no false ego. You know, what Narad Muni has is only pure intentions to rectify people's nonsense and bring them closer to Krishna according to their condition. And therefore here with Nalakwar and Manigriv, in fact, it is explained, Nalakwar and Manigru being the sons of Kubera, Kubera is Yaksha. And Yaksha, their propensity is naturally meant for enjoyment. Like in Siddha Loka, there are Siddhas. In Tapa Loka, there are people who are performing Tapasya. That is their natural propensity. So the Yaksha Loka, their natural propensity is to enjoy. You know, they do three things. Bhoga, you know, enjoyment, I remember one devotee, one proper disciple said, for bhoga you don't need opulence, for bhoga you need a small beady also. <laughs> you see people on the railway platform, you know, this, this poor people, you know, carrying rags, what they are doing, they are enjoying, they have a paper, they put some kind of drugs, you know, the rich kids who are westernized in Bombay, they sit in a bar spending lakhs of rupees doing the same thing what these kids are doing on the railway platform. Right? 
this people clothes are dirty and this people's clothes are weird hmm? right <laughs> there is no difference these people have beard and these people also have a beard and they pay more money to you know go to the barber and do like that if you see all the you know college going kids who have no spiritual culture you know there is no values given they look so strange and they have a french perfume and these people are stinking but otherwise in regards to their demeanor and their behavior there is no difference one may speak marathi and one may speak westernized english but the habits and the actions are all the same when you see these people you know, very strange so for bhoga you don't need aishwarya for bhoga you know you can use anything and enjoy right this is one thing they are always performing bhoga bhoga ishwarya prasaktanam toya parta chetasa and then second is vilas opulent you know extremely opulent situations you no know, having a huge massive infrastructure for gambling right huge infrastructure for eating huge infrastructure for many things you know just spending thousands of rupees for one night so that vilas bhoga vilas and then vihar so that's what they were doing actually i read somewhere that nalakuver and manigri were spoiled sons of kuber kuber even though he is the he is the in charge of money of the demigods can you imagine he is the treasurer of the demigods in india the finance the you know, people you know the ministers also right you know they make so much of money within 5 years right so much you can't imagine 1 crore 8 uh, 180000 crores this figures you know i don't know how you how you handle that much of money within 4 5 years and people still elect them you no know, recently in andhra pradesh there was some by poll election and the person is supposed to be sitting in jail is winning all the seats that shows you know how ignorant the people are therefore proper said democracy is simply crazy doesn't make any sense so the third is vihar moving one place to another place so these two sons of nala uh, kubera kubera never fell into this trap of enjoyment you know he was always worshiping vishnu but his sons fell and therefore it is said that now kailash is not their place lord shiva's place so nalakuver and manigri were sent by kubera to boarding school at kailash you know to perform some tapasya this happens when the parents are not able to handle their children they sent to boarding school so that the children can learn discipline so but because they are so expert in enjoying sense gratification even in the disciplined atmosphere you know somewhere hiding underneath a tree in the corner of the lake in their rooms also you know one student was telling me you know two of his old friends is a devotee his two friends from school they came to his home they realized somewhere that his parents are not they came to his home you know bringing drugs and they are asking can we smoke here to to hamara jigri dost hai you know you facilitate he said come on nonsense you know we have dts in our home don't you see curtain band kar do na <laughs> they are saying like that he said allow us please you know we have no other place right so one who's tremendously affected by enjoyment it doesn't matter where they are and that's what we see unfortunately that alaknanda you know it's a higher ganga there is a greater facility for purification so this nalakur and manigri they chose that spot they came for study but some other the money was there rolling in and the you know expert is where they are how to enjoy and there are always people to follow them 
Uh, if there are crazy Nalokar and Manikri, there will be crazy girls also to follow them. Right? Like in Ravana's Lanka, when Hanumanji came in looking for Mother Sita, what did he see? He saw hundreds of women, you know, all surrounded. Ravan, perverted Raslila. Hmm? And the, in the Acharyas explain, just imagine. Many were kidnapped, but many came attracted by the qualities of Ravan. We want such person as our husband. Hmm? That he has great resources to enjoy. They didn't see that, okay, he has values, he has a spiritual culture, no, he has a lot of power, a lot of resources to enjoy. And they wanted such husband. And therefore they were there, you know, trying to please Ravan. So similarly here Nalakur and Manigri had people he could buy, he could purchase. You know, they were in Mandakini Ganga and therefore Prabhupada explains, he said whether you are in Ganga or some other place, purification does not happen just because you are in Ganga. It's a status of mind. If the mind is not right, you can create a purified Ganga also into a swimming pool and try to enjoy there. And therefore we see, unfortunately, many devotees are going to Jagannath Puri. Right, Lord Jagannath is there, wherein Mahaprabhu with his associates, every year, you know, they were offering these beautiful prayers. Lord Chaitanya would chant, you know, Navayache, that I don't want wealth, I don't want money. And right in that very Jagannath Puri, there are so many resorts. Right, people are not, they might go because, you know, Many are Hindus, they have to, they want to sprinkle their life with some, some religiosity, go offer, you know, just bow down their half head and then walk out and go back to the beach to enjoy. So how even the holy places are used for increasing sinful tendencies. If you are not serious about serious advancement, if you are going, you know, just for the sake of going to the holy place, more than Lord Jagannath affecting us, the beach will affect. Right. So therefore, Prabhupada, as Prahlad Prabhupada was quoting, when all the devotees came to Radhakund, when you come to Radhakund, when you come to the holy river, the atmosphere of that place has to change our, our culture, our consciousness. The soberty has to increase, but we are so, you know, indifferent the power of the holy place does not affect because the negativity is so great that even Radha could almost became a swimming pool. Therefore, Prabhupada had to stop them. I said, no more swimming, no more bathing in Radha Kund. Why no more bathing in Radha Kund? Not because Radha Kund is not powerful to purify us, but we take it so lightly that we don't get complete benefit of taking bath in Radha Kund. As Bhakti Tirth Maharaj would say, when we go to holy place, if we do not go as changed people, minimize anarthas and maximize your purity, he said you are simply cheating yourself and you are cheating others. Right? We see in Vrindavan, you know, Vrindavan, you know, is the place of Kalpavriksha trees. You know, it is a place of dust. But unfortunately, those who are not qualified people with little immature devotional service when they go, you know, then what happens? They convert Vrindavan into a massive concrete forest. So when it is converted to concrete forest, Vrindavan is still Vrindavan. But what we see Vrindavan now with our mundane vision, it's all around buildings. Right? You don't see dust moving. You see Italian marble. Right. You don't see trees being planted. You know, now golf, golf club is coming. No, there is a golf club in Vrindavan, in Govardhan. Right. There is a beer bar, Gokul beer bar. You know, they are, they are <laughs> making, just see how the mentality is that our contaminated consciousness contaminates the holy place. And then you want to create some spirituality in your sense gratification also. Gokul beer bar, Ram non veg restaurant, right? Like Krishna Chandra would always say that, you know, someone him, 
whom he knew that he would drink but very religiously he would put tulsi into his wine <laughs> the hindus are very expert in making spiritual place into place of sense gratification and place of sense gratification just putting little tulsi <laughs> and trying to spiritualize it trying to make trying to religious make it religious so nalakore and manigri you know they made this place you know ganga you know there are rules to take bath in ganga i think nityanand prabhu spoke about this and that very ganga a sinful person go to ganga and he repents that i am so sinful just that thought and you enter into ganga you know there are no rules very interesting there are many rules to take bath in ganga but if your consciousness is consciousness of repentfulness then you can take bath ganga snan is like chanting hare krishna only there is no purva samskara that required when we chant hare krishna when we worship the deities there are purvanga samskaras then you have to bathe then you have to apply tilak then you have to do pranayam then you have to sit and offer 16 upacharas so many purvanga samskaras are there then only you are qualified to worship the deities then be before that you have to be initiated brahman also right but with ganga snan there is no samskara that required when you want to chant hare krishna niyamita smarane na kala there is no there is no rules and regulation any time it doesn't matter our ravindra swarup was mentioning that when a devotee sees even a drunkard who could never chant if he chants he becomes very happy why because the chanting has the power and it has the rule is no rule that we put rules in chanting to make our chanting more devotional otherwise chanting doesn't expect any rule similarly ganga snan is no rule like we were discussing in our class in the brahmachari ashram that when arjuna when he was bathing in that place this angara parna now chitrata came to with his people is another gandharva he came with the set of you know women to prove his power to enjoy and he told arjun hey come on this is the time for us get out of this place this is the time for gandharvas and you cannot take bath arjuna said this rule applies for all other rivers not for ganga he said human beings can take bath at any time there is no such rule so then there was a war between arjuna and angara parana and arjuna chastised him burnt his rath and then since then he accepted the name dagdarat so ganga is like that but if the consciousness is not repentful you use ganga to enjoy then she will not give that desired result she makes you tree you know they were enjoying their bathing naked and then narad muni when he came in fact our radha govind maharaj explains rather than greeting narad muni they said are ye idhar kya kar raha hai why is he coming here you are suspecting narad muni only what is his intention you know sometime when devotees are preaching somewhere kya maharaj idhar kya kar rahe ho you know people ask this question you know what is your intention why are you here so similarly they were not only neglecting narad muni but they were ridiculing narad muni and because they were ridiculing narad muni some or other the girls had some shame so they covered immediately immediately they covered so that is the difference you know they were uncovered they covered so narad muni he seeing them their consciousness is so shameless so stone like and proper the explains one who is enjoying sense gratification some sometimes he become like stone like the consciousness does does not move only there is no repentance there is no rectification somebody has to forcefully give them the medicine they were sleeping in fact they were not sleeping they were pretending to sleep they knew they had the culture the father had taught them the culture no kubera was expert in greeting saintly people that was part of their culture when a saintly person is coming still 
you know we see that i remember one time we were in one village and the local mla you know he was supporting he said okay i will help you so myself and dayal netapur went to visit his place and he was smoking cigarette and immediately after he saw us immediately put that cigarette in the ashtray so that means he know that cigarette smoking is not good now at least that culture was there but nowadays people will say why not you also smoke huh? you know lord shiva smokes his followers also smoke you must be smoking also you know dhammaro dham hare krishna wale you know so like that people have such a wrong concept so this nalakur and manigriva exactly they were like that so therefore narad muni had to he had the power also he had the power and that's what they required not that narad muni had the power and therefore he used it that is what they had required it was not that narad muni lost his uh, you know he he lost his control over senses he lost he became angry no it was very a conscious effort very disciplined effort it was not narad muni curse then he repented oh i should have not curse you know why did i curse them no the discipline factor is a very interesting and very important factor in the vedic concept now pinching a child you know if you read this purport in american school that will be abuse child abuse by narad muni no how can you abuse like that so pampering it has become the norm that you abuse children by pampering now so narad muni is the combination of punishment and mercy that's what works only mercy doesn't work only punishment doesn't work so here nalakur and manigriv needed this punishment from narad muni very very severe for 100 years with remembrance of their sinful activities which will bring lord krishna there and then narad muni speaks more harsh words they sound harsh but that medicine is required otherwise if that is not given then the tendency of the conditioned soul you know as the sense gratification was prevalent in those time the sense gratification is also prevalent in this time and to increase sense gratification in the name of devotee association you know doesn't take much time you know one could say i am doing at least with devotees what do you expect me you know i am still a devotee i am doing with in the association of devotees i remember one devotee recently on 31st december he called me from one of our local devotee only he was shocked to see you know some devotees that taken a very recent mundane very you know horrible song and they try to krishnaize it right so this devotee was saying prabhu ji i don't know about this song but the kind of atmosphere i experienced he said it was not as if chanting hare krishna it was as if chanting that song only but using hare krishna as an excuse he was very disturbed by this therefore what to be what to krishna what to krishna is is not our domain it is the domain of an advanced devotee our our domain is to simply follow otherwise you know what we krishna is in krishnaizing what happens you know krishna goes away and only that stuff remains which will destroy our spiritual life and then we could also become like mani griva and nalakuvar and somewhere narad muni has to come and pull us out from there very painful situation so therefore you know narad muni's expertise in bringing back the conditioned souls to krishna is a very amazing system and shila prabhupada also followed the same system for he explains you know dealing with devotees dealing with different devotees differently you know our whole, uh, the whole process of krishna consciousness is very subjective it is not very objective pulling everybody in the same track will not work and therefore when we follow in the footsteps of narad muni shila prabhupada and all the great acharyas then anyone who is coming from any background you know when he comes in contact with expert devotee 
they will expertly buy curse, buy pampering, buy chastising, buy starving, buy feasting, you know, whatever they do, because they are expert physician and that medicine certainly works as it worked for Nalakuvar and Manigriv. From being in the Alaknanda Ganga, you know, enjoying sense gratification, now they are offering such a beautiful prayers. They will offer beautiful prayers, which are you know, famous prayers and they are continuing to stay in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Any questions or comment? Yes, you guys are full. Um, Hare Krishna Guruji, thank you for your wonderful class. Uh, you are talking about uh, some devotees were offered sense gratification and also devotion. And uh, many times it happens in our devotional life also that we do are harboring some material desires or some material enjoyment. May not be grossly breaking the four regulative principles. And it happens that exactly that what we are desiring sometimes comes before us. And then there is a confusion <coughs> that whether it is that Krishna wants me to just enjoy this and then continue with my devotional service or whether it is a test that whether whether I am able to give up uh, this sense gratification. So how does a devotee decide that whether it is a test or whether Krishna wants me to just do with this? We see our uh, Vedic system Dharma Artha Kam and Moksha. For us Moksha is Prema Bhakti. You know, this is a natural process through which living entity has to go, most living entities. Only exceptional souls can avoid it. And one who tries to be artificial exceptional soul, then he does something, you know, this process at the wrong time. You know, dharma, Artha, Kama. You know, these three principles, you see, everybody's life is governed by these three principles. There is some value system and when people are going for education, they have to, they are educating because they want to make money and the money is there because in, in householder life or any life for that matter, you know, different kinds of sense gratification is there, you know, that is normal. So therefore, if it is coming at the right time, you know, as it is your quota, so there is a facility without distracting oneself as long as your 16 rounds as long as your regular satsang program is not minimized and the sense gratification is coming at the right time trying to get sense gratification at a wrong time you know, like our schools and colleges you know, all these international schools right luxurious school you know what they do somebody said engineering college medical college like a marriage bureau only right no somebody gave a quote you know, people are not studying, you know, they are they are free mixing. So at the time of school and college, if this is what people are anticipating, excited, I want to go to college now. Right. So when you enjoy at the wrong time, then you have to perform austerity at the wrong time also. The reaction will come. So this is what the modern world is. Modern world is providing you know artificial lifestyle. You no know, whether you are 5 year old or you are 70 year old everybody is geared towards artha and kama artha and kama artha and kama has, has become such a you know in such an artificial way therefore very nice uh, saying i read in one uh, one community book they say money one who doesn't have money is poor and one who has only money is poorer and that is what modern world is Modern world is what? You know, money is there, money is there, money is there, but no relationship. Right, here the children were crying, glorifying their mother. And another devotee told me, you know, you know very qualified people, they are like pushing their old mother, you know, because they have, they have to increase their, their money making business. So nobody wants to take care of the mother. 
she is crying alone right so therefore our sense gratification is not this is what explained by lord ram to bharat he says sense gratification should not destroy our dharma and our dharma should not destroy our quota which we are supposed to get of the sense gratification therefore lord narsing dev and lord vishnu if you study gave similar instruction to dhruva and prahlad maharaj hmm? the verse is little different bhogya na punyam kushala na papam you know both these verses are there with dhruva also you know enjoy your sense gratification enjoy your quota and then perform pious activity proper right pious means devotional service the problem is the modern man or woman they don't have the expertise of balancing once the sense gratification comes forget god or sometime artificially take to spirituality becoming irresponsible to your other duties so this that is the biggest problem in kali yuga that not having the art of balancing anything which is done artificially whether your devotional service also if you become pure devotee i remember many many years back there was one young man he would come to our temple and he read you know the life of goswami and he was very much fascinated he thought i also want to be a goswami and he stopped eating you know and he was continuously chanting and some other in those days we were reading uh, teachings of queen kunti or kapila i forgot it there in proper the explains one who tries to imitate the actions of goswami is he will go insane and this boy actually our president i think that time i don't know bhakti rasamrit maharaj was there or somebody and then we had to take him to our nayar hospital you know we had to take him to a psychiatrist because he was assuming that i have become goswami you know they are six i am the seventh goswami <laughs> so that is also arrogance you know try to abruptly and artificially imitate the actions of pure devotee you know i have become pure devotee now i am going to chant this many rounds i am going to do this i will not eat so you are placing yourself you know in their this thing then it will not work out therefore at what stage what to do this art is unknown previously you know they are, they knew the kings would enjoy like anything and suddenly they would retire and go to the jungle why because the time is up they would be 50 they would be 55 no yudhishthira maharaj you know fought for the kingdom and he was still strong once he realized that krishna has gone back to the spiritual world he had the power he had the intelligence he had the detachment placed parikshit maharaj and out there huh? so they could see you know somebody said therefore to see the seasonal changes is very important why you have to see the seasonal changes that gives the understanding of adjustment according to changes in bombay you don't see the change only season changes right even in the rainy season also we are covered ac is on every time 24 hours uh, 365 days so you don't see flowers blooming because there are no flower trees only buildings so when there is no change of season even a 60 year old man can look still young by dying his hair right so you don't see the change because you don't see the change you don't know what to do at what stage no the schools are like that the colleges are like that there is no difference between school and college in the school also there is nonsense going on in the college also nonsense is going on in the office also nonsense is going on right so everything same everywhere same so money and sense gratification becomes very powerful you know there is no change and therefore we need the association of devotees so sense gratification at the right time is healthy at the wrong time a disease no and therefore lord chaitanya told ramanand roy and uh, i think his brother also wanted to join he said hey, come on if everybody joins what will happen no he said stay back and perform your duties rightly tukara maharaj you know shivaji maharaj also came 
to chant Hare Krishna with him. He said, no, stay there only. You know, you do your duty and let me do my duty. No, let us come together time to time and chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. We'll stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Jai Shila Prabhupada ki. Grantara Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai.